Okay, everybody, you should be recording. And let me say this again. I sent you a, a video this morning, a screencast, uh, where I went through uh, basically a, a lecture. Uh, and then tonight, uh, what I'm going to do is go through this assignment that's due on the 5th of June, uh, pardon me, which is due the 8th of June, this spreadsheet tutorial, pages 257 to 270, and uh, that is from Tanika's Tanning Salon. And what I'm uh, what I'm going to do, going to do is is this um, as we as we go through the course, I'll have the live sessions going each evening and I'm gonna and I'm gonna try to record them but like hap what happened last night was sometimes bad went bandwidth gets exceeded. We're still kind of experimenting with this. And so it's probably gonna be better for me just to have the video conference scheduled so people if they want to can sit through that and and the ground based people can show up as well. And then I will I will send uh, I'll do a short video uh, on the workshops that shows you how I did them or how you would do them. So I can save you and, and myself some time, give you a chance if you wanna sit through the class and listen to that, and then have the video of course to go over. So we're gonna talk about this, this spreadsheet tutorial, uh, and uh, we're gonna be using a file from there, and the file is called Salon2. Now I'm in student view here, and I'm gonna go up to a sc and scroll up here, and there's a couple of ways to get to Salon 2. One of them is to go through the course repository. And we did that some last night, and we had some problems. So I'm going to go back over here to the course repository, okay? And I'm going to follow that link out to the repository where we keep all these files. I mentioned that last night. And I'm going to come down, I'm going to file the, find the... Um, Excel file called Salon 2, okay? And here it is. And I'm gonna download this file. And I'm gonna click Enable Editing. And we may find that there's a bit of an issue with this, and we ran into this last night. You'll notice up here the conditional formatting, for example, is 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 no good. So let's close that off. Oh, we won't save it. Now let's try a second procedure. Okay, this is Salon Two, and let's view it. And that's not going to help us uh, because what it's going to do is put it into a uh, PDF into a PDF viewer. And that's not what we want either. So we'll close that off. And why it's uh, why it's giving us some problems, I'm not quite sure. So what we'll do is we're gonna try one third step and it's this. Go into the uh, course repository and we're gonna go into the to this section on the left over there and it's called files and click on that and we should find the salon file in here there it is salon 2 okay and we're going to download it and we're going to see uh, what we get with it and we'll enable editing And it looks like the, that, there we are. Now we have uh, the, um, the uh, we have the capacity now to go ahead and use the conditional formatting and so forth. So what I'm gonna do now is I have this file I'm gonna, and I've, I've, I've downloaded it from the website. Again, I went into the files, it's on the left-hand side, and I found the Salon 2. I'm gonna click on File, I'm gonna click Save As. 
computer, browse, and I'm going to go over and put it on my desktop. And I'm going to rename this just June 5 assignment. Okay, I'm going to save it on my desktop. Okay, and so uh, we've got that now, and we're able to do some work with it. Now, again, I want to talk about some of the design principles, so I'm going to size this up just a bit so we can see it a little better. And you're going to notice that we have a price list, and I talked about that last week, I mean last night. This price list is, this is basically like a template, or it's like a a table or an array of data where we have uh, the, the, the type of item, okay? And then we have the price of each item, okay? So that, uh, and this is, if we were designing a database table, this is what we would call a table of constants, okay? Then we have a tab here for a summary and we're gonna get work on it tonight, okay? And, and we'll, I'll show you uh, what we're gonna do. Then we have data for week one, and we'll size those up and you can see we have the, the uh, price, we have the item, we have the price, the category, and then the, the uh, sum of the units, of uh, probably the Sunday units, the Sunday sales, so we have units and dollars here. And we're gonna take these data and we're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to work with them and transform them. Now, for example, on the Sunday units, Okay, those are just raw data that have been entered and recorded. But if we click on cell, and I'm gonna size this up a little bit better so you can see. If you click on cell E5, you're gonna see a formula. Now, when you click on that cell, okay, and I'm gonna click inside the, the uh, formula bar, this is, using a, this is using a database technique called VLOOKUP, a vertical lookup where we look up some, we look up data from an array of data that are set, that are, that are, that are vertical. In other words, we're looking, we're looking through columns. And in this case, we're going to do a VLOOKUP and the, and we can click on this little FX and it will give us the dialog box. It should. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But we'll just take a look at it. We'll talk about what this is. A5 is the value we're looking up, okay? And then price list is the array, okay, of cells from which we're gonna look up A5. And we're gonna see if we find something that matches. And we're gonna, and we're gonna look for a match for something in the second column of that array, which the second column of that array is the price and false means we want an exact match and we're going to multiply that that number that we get that we look up using the VLOOKUP times D5 and of course D5 is the number of units and we'll click that in and we get $125. Now I want you to notice something if you look in cell E5 that's what we call the display that's what we see. The formula bar up above is what's underneath that. So we see that's what we would call the design view. And then here is the data set or result set view. Now, one of the nice things is that once we've created a formula, we, another concept of IT is that we can create algorithms. We can add value to a set of data. Remember, we talked about the fact that data are just is just stuff. Information is data that I can use to make a decision, okay? And then information that's replicable and can be reused is knowledge. We talked about that, what we call the, uh, the, the, the hierarchy. And I can basically do a drop-down menu. If I, in fact, if I take my cursor and go down cell E6, 7, what you'll see changing each time 
is the row in column A and the row in column D. Now, we put an anchor, we used a formula bar there uh, for, we use in this formula, you'll notice we put a dollar sign in front of the A. That pins us to the column. It's what we call, this is what we call relative cell referencing. And this is, when we write a formula, we're doing two things. We're using cell references, okay? And then we're performing a mathematical operation. So a spreadsheet acts like a database to a certain extent and then crunches numbers. So we've got the Sunday units and the Sunday sales. And of course, that's basically these, and we can drag and drop this and go down as far as we want. And so cell, uh, cell um, uh, E, 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 pardon me, E5 down to E22. That's the dollar volume for Sunday, for Sundays for week number one. Okay. Now we can add more value by summing those data and we just sum them. We'll click on the formula bar. So we summed E5 e, e through E22. And we can also get the sum of the units for Sunday of all the different products we use. And we can do that and we'll start here at D5. Pardon me, what I'll do is I'm gonna come down to D23 and I'm gonna put equal sum and then a parenthesis and then I'm going to put my cursor here at D5 and I'm going to scroll all the way down to D22 press enter okay now I'll just simply just do the same thing here in column F now I realized, as I said this the other night in class, some of you are programmers and very skilled at this. Um, some of you uh, have some real problems. Maybe you have, just haven't had the opportunity to have the experience, and I understand that. You can see to me I'm having to kind of mess with this a little bit. F22. And we get the sum. And we're just going to move across and we're getting the sum of the units. I'll do the same thing for Tuesday units. I will do the same thing for the Wednesday units. And we'll do the same thing for the Thursday units. Notice I'm following an algorithm. I'm following a pattern here. I'm coming down to row 23. And I put equal sum, and then I come back up to row five. This time I'm in column L, and I'm gonna come on down here to row 22. I press enter, and there we are, 125. And then we'll get the units for Friday. And then we'll scroll over here and we'll get the units for Saturday. So in, uh, in P23, cell P23, I put equals sum, parenthesis, and I come up here and I start at row at P5 and come all the way down. And I have the, uh, 
volume, the total units for all of the days of the week. And then we get the total units for each item for the entire week. And then we get the total dollar sales for each item for the entire week. Now, I want you to take for a moment and put your cursor and, and click on uh, cell S5 and then click above up in the formula bar and you'll see these little squares that occur in different colors. These are what we call um, graphic user interface these or breadcrumbs that allow you to see what data you're actually working with. And here it, the, it lights up uh, the, the, I'm working with the uh, this is the data in I-5. Well, we, boy, even before that, I'll scroll back over here. I can see the formula of the data in E-5, G-5, J-5, K-5, M-5, O-5, and uh, Q-5. And notice each we've got, we skip columns. That's where, because now we have units. These are dollar sales. These are those price extensions. So we, we have these for each of these. And we'll press that in. There we are. Okay. Now we can look at cell uh, P, uh, pardon me, S5 and Sarah says, okay, is 105 times nine. 109 times 5, 545, yeah. So the math, the math looks good. The math looks good here as well. As well. 48 times 50 is 1,200. So we're in good shape here, and we have these totals. Now, what we'll need to do is come back and do the same thing for each of each of these other days. And I'm going to scroll up for a minute. And, we've done, and I've done that already. There's no point in, in repeating ourselves. Uh, and I'm just going to start here with the... Um, the Sunday units, and I'm scrolling up a little bit here, and I'm gonna bring these on down, and I'm gonna stop at row 23, and I'm gonna come up here to the right and press the auto sum, and that'll give me the auto sum. I'm gonna do the same thing with Monday. These are the Monday units, okay? I'll press auto sum, and I'm gonna get the total there. Notice what we're doing here is we're adding some value to these data and they're becoming information because they're becoming part of a sum. And once I have data summed, I've processed them to the point now where I can also start to look at how, well, how they're dispersed. I can do things like compute the mean, the mean or the average or the standard deviation. So we're adding some value to these data and we're preparing to them to become information. In fact, they're already information because I could say, okay, how do my sales look for uh, units uh, for a given day? And I'm going to scroll down five to, uh, and I'll do the auto sum. Now we have a little bit more work to do. We'll do the Saturday units. We'll come on down and we'll scroll all the way down. Then we'll do the auto sum. We get to, we'll take, uh, we'll highlight, start highlighting at cell P5, come all the way down to P23, and then up here we'll click auto sum, and that'll give us the automatic sum for those. And then we'll come over here to row R, and those are the total units. And we already had those. So as you can see, and we also did something with these totals here, grand totals, uh, we put them in bold. So now I know my total dollar sales for the week, this is week two, the total number of units that I sold in week two, by product. I know the total number of units sold by day. So I've created a matrix here for all intents and purposes. And we're just gonna go back in now to uh, week number three. We'll do the same thing there. And so we'll start with the Sunday units. Let's make sure that we have everything done there. And 
when you get these little squiggly things, that means that this just bunched together and it's telling you, hey, please give me a little more space so I can be seen. That's all this, when you see that, it's not some terrible thing. Okay. All righty. So week two looks good. Week one, we'll go back, make sure it's in good shape. We've got it in good shape. Now we're on week three. And we can squinch these out a little bit. Make sure we see the dollars. Now notice that we have two types of, of mathematical data. One is units sold, just simple counts. And the other are amounts, dollar values, based upon the number of units times the price per unit. So we're gonna work on three here, and I'm gonna start here at, um, start here at uh, D5, I'm in tab three. Put my cursor in D5, I'm gonna come all the way down to D23, I'm gonna do auto sum. And then I'm going to repeat that process uh, at uh, F5, down to F23, and I'll press the auto sum. And I'm going to repeat, repeat that process in uh, column H, where I get Tuesday. Notice there's the algorithm. Every other column I'm working with, because one column are units, one column is uh, dollars, the extensions. And we do the same thing for Wednesday. We'll do the same thing for Thursday. We're getting these totals. Now, as I said, as I mentioned in class the other night, the authors can put you through or might put you through a whole lot of data, just simple data entry. And there's just really no point in it. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm down here. I'm doing the auto sum. And so I should be good to go. Now I'm gonna make sure that I've got totals everywhere. And I do. And I'm gonna come down here to, come down to, to uh, cell uh, D23. And if it's not bold, make it bold. Okay. And now we'll work on uh, week four. Again, we'll, Punch that up just a little bit. And we're gonna start with column D. I'll go to D5. And since we've designed, since we followed the design principle where we've used standardization, this becomes much easier to work with. That's another key principle in IT, we standardize things and automate them as much as we possibly can so that the machine does the work for us or the software does the work for us and we can do the thinking. This is why I said IT is decision centric. And I'm gonna come back over here, I'm gonna F all the way down there, the auto sum. Now we got that for the units, and I'm gonna bring this up a little bit and look at it, make sure we're good. And that's good, we'll make sure that D5 there is bold again. I'm in the week four, so I have all four tabs done. I have all four weeks, okay? Okay, now I'm ready to do some work in this tab called the summary. Now, if you look over here, you'll notice we've done some work already. I have, I have, uh, I have the week one units. And uh, if you'll click on C5, you're gonna see C5 there in the summary tab. You've downloaded this, you'll see it, the number of units, it says equals week, equal week one, exclamation point R5. 
What I literally did was I used to use cell referencing and I went in and got R5, which is the total units sold in week one for sessions. Week two equal week two R5. And I'll have a sales figure there. And that's going to be um, I'll get the week two sales here in just a minute. Uh, let's just go ahead and do that. We want the week two sales dollars for one session. So let's click on the week two tab. And let's go over here and we'll find we're in week two and we want the total dollars for session one, for one session. I'm gonna go week two. So I'm gonna click uh, equal and then I'm gonna go to week two. And I'm gonna find the total dollar sales and I get the 190. And notice the cell reference. Look here for a moment and you'll see the pattern. Again, IT, when it's done well, helps us build patterns, i.e. algorithms. I have uh, in cell C5, I have the number of units, which equals week one, R5. Then week one, S5, that's the dollars. Week two, R5, units for week two. Uh, S5, uh, unit, uh, the dollars uh, figures for week two. Week three units is week three R5. Week three sales. Uh, week three uh, S5. Week four units um, is going to be, of course, equal week four, exclamation point R5. And then S5 has the total sales in week four for, for one session. Now we need the total units sold for that product. So this will equal the sum. And I'm just going to simply click on um, C5 plus E5 plus G5 plus I5 plus and that gives me the four weeks. Now, before we press enter, let's take a look at this for a moment. Uh, if your cursor, uh, if, you, if you've been following along, notice that the following are, are lit up. Red, green, yellow, blue, cell C5, E5, G5, and I5. Those are the units. So we're ready, we'll press that in. Now, I should be able just to drag and drop this on down. To get the totals. Okay. Now I'll click on that cell. At C6. And you see the pattern? Now I'll click on this cell, C7, E7, G7, same thing there, C, E, G, and I. Now we have one last thing to do here, and we want to do the sales. So we'll just repeat that process equal sum, and we'll get the sales for week one plus the sales for week two plus the sales for week three, plus the sales for week four. And we're gonna enter that. 
and then we'll just drag and drop it all the way down. And let's look at this for a minute, a minute and ask ourselves a question, does this make sense? Well, let's look at, and a good thing is to eyeball a couple of columns. Is 201 times five, 1,005? Yes. If we took 127 times um, the, five dollar, the, the five sessions is 25? Yeah. And we'll look at the, some other ones that we should make some sense to us. Now, one of the things we didn't do here in the summary is we did the categories, but we did not, um, we didn't, we didn't do the, um, we didn't do the, we didn't put in the prices. So it makes it a little difficult, but that's okay. We'll, we'll live with that. Now come over to column C and put your cursor on C5 and scroll all the way down to C23. Okay. And you say, are we going to use the auto sum? Yes, click auto sum. Now click in cell C23, we just did the auto sum. And we're just going to simply drag this across and it will repeat that formula and sum all of those for us. Notice what it's doing. It's giving us cost sums for column D, column E, G. Again, Anytime we can use an algorithm or we can use a pattern, uh, we do it. And that's how uh, that a formula, for example, is a valuable tool. It become, and that's how we take data and transform it. We're literally taking data and transforming it into information. Okay? So now we've done this whole thing. Now, I'm going to make sure at this point, since I've done all this work, I'm going to click File, Save As, on my computer and then the desktop. And I'm going to click June 5 assignment and it's probably going to say it already exists. Do you want to replace it? Yes, because we've been doing this editing work. This is just to save it, keep it here for us. Now, I want to show you something. We talked earlier about the display of data versus the underlying design or the GUI. Here in C5, notice. Okay, if you put your cursor there, you're going to see the 109. But if you look up at the formula bar, you see equal week one, R5. Now, I also want to mention before I forget it, we're basically doing the same thing we do with web pages when we put them together, okay, um, out on the world, uh, out on the, the uh, world wide web or the web, okay, because the internet and the web are two different things. And we just basically are doing some cell referencing to pull this together. Now, to help us a little bit with the visual acuity of this, I'm gonna come over here to C4, and I'm gonna highlight all the way over, okay? I'm gonna come from C4, and I'm gonna come all the way over, and I'm gonna bold those up. And there's that nice Tamika's tanning swan all that beautiful uh, formatting and stuff that they told us. And if you want to find out how something's formatted, it's really simple, okay? Watch what I'm going to show you. I'm more interested in this. I'm going to click on plan type. Now, if you look up in the toolbar, you're going to see, first of all, they're using Calibri font, size 11, okay? It's bolded, all right? And it's in a particular color. The font color that's been chosen. And then we know that it's also uh, centered. In fact, I can click on that plan type, that column uh, cell A3, and I can right click it, and it will tell me everything about that my options, etc. So I'm in good shape here. Now, one of the things we want to do is try to, to start to do some preliminary work. So I'm going to do a little other thing. I'm going to put my cursor here at cell C5, and I'm going to highlight all the way down to L23, 
okay? I'm gonna go from C5 to L23. And then I'm gonna come over to the right hand, left hand part of the toolbar and I'm gonna find the borders. And I'm gonna choose all borders. That just makes it a little prettier for us to look at. Now, in order to differentiate dollars, okay, from just units, everywhere it's a sales, that total, I'm gonna to make it a dollar. I don't have to do it except at the bottom. And I do that to save space. And when I do it at the bottom, it implies that we're working with dollars. And so I know the dollar amounts, okay, that, uh, and if I really want to be formal, I'll come over here to week one sales and I'll make that dollar. Week two sales, a dollar. Week three sales, a dollar. Week four sales figure, that's uh, the week four sales figure, a dollar. And then the total sales, dollar. Now, this is what I'm doing here is I'm transforming these data, I'm reformatting them, giving them a better, more richer meaning, so that when you see it, you see the dollar sign, you say, okay, one is units, okay, and the other is, is, is dollars, the price times the unit. We also have a, a thing over here in terms of what we call category. This is an attribute or value. We've categorized our products, okay? Now we're ready to do some, just some very, very simple uh, visualization of these data. And all I, I always like to say, okay, we're always looking for outliers. I'm gonna start here with uh, cell E5. I'm gonna highlight all the way down to E22, okay? Pardon me, I, I'm at K5, I'm so sorry. K5 down to K22, excuse me. These are the total units per product for all the weeks. I'm gonna come up here on the right hand side where it says formatting and I'm gonna choose conditional formatting. I'm gonna scroll down to where it says color scales and I'm gonna choose this first one, green, yellow, red color scale. This is called a gradient. Sometimes you'll hear people use the term thermal. This is very much like what you see when you're looking at the weather and they show you the intensity of rain or the intensity of the wind or the intensity of the hail or something like that. But you'll see, uh, you'll see different colors and where the rain's the most, that, uh, usually they'll have a green, a red, a yellow, then a red, red being the most intense level of rain, whatever. Well. We're used to looking at these things and, and making judgments and always looking for outliers. Now we see a couple of outliers here. For example, on session one, we see the green, the darker the green, okay, the higher the number of units, the redder, the lower the number of units. And you can see that we have some in shades in between. So now we have a continuum and we've used the color wave and we've really created a chart, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing with total sales. This will give us some interesting, so I'm gonna put my cursor on L5. I'm gonna come all the way down to L22. I'm gonna come up in the right hand top and that's in the conditional formatting and I'm gonna come down to color scales. And again, I'm gonna choose the first one green, yellow, red, green larger, yellow in the middle, red the lower figures. And of course, as we would sense, or we would assume, although we sell a whole bunch of units of one session, it doesn't generate a lot of money, okay? And this is an opportunity for us to stop and think about this, to ask yourself a question. If I'm selling, if, the, if I'm just selling people who just come in and visit, I'm encouraging and I have a lot of foot traffic, which is great if the $5 covers the cost of the visit. People got to park somewhere, uh, so you, they've got to come in, you've got to give them towels, they're gonna be in a tanning bed, you gotta have someone out there to take their money, you, you get my drift. And so you can see 
uh, we're always concerned about what kind of margin am I making. I already have an insight about these data. Tanika runs a cash and carry operation. Now, everything that we've done so far is covered on a t very tedious step by step by step pages 257 to 270, where they talk about design of the workbook, preparation of the spreadsheet, all of the details. They even show you the, uh, the, the data you should have for week one sales, week two sales, week three uh, unit sales, and then the week four unit sales. And that takes you over to page 270, and then it gets to figure 19, and, and, and that's kind of where we stop. And you'll notice I haven't gone through each of those steps, but if you want to, you can do that. Now, that will end up with, okay, the entire sum of the data, okay? And in fact, if you go on over to page 290, you'll see eventually, page 290 shows you the entire set of data. We really have them right here. We've done them. But I just wanted to do this, first of all, so you can see we've got we can do a little bit of visualization, okay? And notice we have uh, by 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 I, the item, the category, the, the the week one units, week two units, etc. Now we've done a little bit of visualization of these data, and what we're looking for are those areas where there's a, a, a match between the two colors. Now look at this. If, for a moment, down here in, in row 22, you see the exact opposite of what you do in row five. In row 22, okay, you have high dollar uh, unit, high total sales, but you have a very, very low number of units. Well, it's simple. You're selling yearly fitness memberships, okay, and they're more expensive, so you don't have to sell that many. But here's food for thought, okay? If you're building, if you're getting that money in advance, a chunk of money, that really stabilizes your cash flow situation. This is what IT can do is to help you make decisions. So even in this simplistic spreadsheet, you can see how we can do that. Now, um, we're going to do one other thing here, and we're going to use a tool, okay? And it's called the pivot table. You can take my cursor. By the way, if I want to, I, I can go ahead and get rid of all those cells, uh, those colors. And I'm going to do that. And then I'll go back up to conditional formatting, clear the cell, clear, clear the rules from the selected cells, and we're back to where we were. Now I'm going to put my cursor at cell um, A4. I'm over here in the summary tab. I've done all this work. And I'm going to come all the way down over to L22. So I'm going to get the array or the collection of cells A4 to L22. I'm going to highlight those, okay? Then I'm going to come up above, up in the toolbar in the very top, I'm going to click insert and you'll see on the far left a thing that's called the pivot table, okay? I'm going to click that and I'm going to get the pivot table, excuse me, Pivot table, table, it's light. Pivot table, dialog box. I use the term dialog box and that's what we're talking about because this, the, the, when IT's done well, it guides you through the decision process based upon what you've put into the, put in, into the, into the data. Here we have, choose the data that you want to select and we did A4 to L22. If we want, we could have used an external data force, a source, you see that there. We choose where we want this to be and we're gonna put it in a new workbook, worksheet. I'll click OK. All right. Now, some of you may have worked with pivot tables a whole lot, some of you may not have, but a pivot table is an exceptionally powerful tool. It allows us to get the best of both worlds, the best of the database, what a database can do for us, Okay, and you'll want to take a look at that. If you uh, 
you want to take a look at the analytical cube and and how and you want to look at that intro video I went through it about how we can use tables and tie things together and the pivot table has the fields we're going to work with and it has a series it has a big picture frame called the filter then we have columns then we have rows and then we have values so we can manipulate these values. and this is a drag and drop environment that's the beautiful thing about it i don't have to do hardly any programming so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the item and I'm going to put it over here in the, I'm going to take the item, I'm going to click item. And I put the item over in the columns. I'm going to put the item in the rows. That's more visually appealing. So I have the row labels. And I'm going to take the category. And I'm put it in columns. And that's the category or type of item if i don't want it on there which i don't right now it's simple i just uncheck it instead i'm going to put the i'm going to look just at units and i'm going to put i'm going to go ahead and do it i'm going to put the category into the columns and then for then for values i'm going to put the week one units the week two units, the week three units, the week four units. So I have those. Now, when I click inside here, okay, the pivot table will disappear. I mean, the, the table uh, template will disappear. And this shows us the sum. I will click back in here. Now, what? Now notice something, okay? We have a whole lot we're looking at. We'll click in here. Okay, now I'm gonna move this pivot table over here. And we see the sum of the week one units per product. And again, we can do some, we can do some uh, conditional formatting if we want to. Okay. And we'll close this field list up. And I'll bring this down in terms of the visual acuity a little bit. Now these are sums, okay, of what we did. And I'm just gonna take my cursor right here and I'm gonna come from all the way over Those are grand totals there in columns uh, R, S, and T. So I'm not going to mess with those. In fact, I'm, I want to come back here. I'm going to start at B, looks like B4, B6, excuse me, and I'm going to go all the way over. And I've got these totals, and now I'm ready to do a little more work with those. And I'll click again on home, and then we'll look at the view, okay? And we'll do some conditional formatting. And we'll just do a simple red and green. And then we start to look for patterns, okay? Now what we've done is we've created a matrix and we've got a lot going on here, a whole lot. So we're gonna go back up here, say, size this down a little bit and get ourselves back reoriented a little bit more.
And we've done a little bit of work here. I'm going to click Home. Okay. And I'm going to click uh, here on the view. And we can start to see some patterns in the data. Now, when I'm finished with this, it's simple. I can just walk myself out of this. All that I've done, I'm just clicking the undo. And I always want to think about the fact that I want to keep things as manageable as I can. So right now, this pivot that I have, and uh, I want to click on the design part, pardon me, on the pivot tables, and I want to show the field list. Here we have something a little bit more manageable, and the truth is we're probably going to want to focus on categories of products, okay? That's one dimension or attribute. We're going to look at, we, we would want to look at the day of the week. Okay. And then we would want to look at products themselves. Okay. And so right here, right now, I can again use my conditional formatting. And I'm just going to start here at, at, at uh, A5 and go down to A22. And I'm going to click Home, and then I'm going to put all, so I've got these data. Notice when I have this field table, pivot table field over here showing, uh, when I click inside the table, click outside the table, it disappears, inside it appears. Now what we've done here is we've created a matrix, and we've got the labels, the types of products, pardon me, the products, then the types of products, and then their totals, the sum for week one. Now we can add in week two. It gets a little more complex, see what I mean? I'm gonna remove this field. Now one of the things that's wonderful about the pivot table makes such a great tool is this. If you come down here to the values, I can click on that little down arrow and I can get value field settings. And notice I can look at the sum, I can look at the count. What was the count of what I sold, not the dollar value. I can go back and look at value field settings, I can look at the average. Or if I want, I can get the maximum. Or on the value field settings, I can get the minimum. Or on the value field settings, I could even get some things like the standard deviation. I've got some uh, cell referencing issues there. I think probably because I, so we'll just stick with the sum. Now if I'm all hot and bothered about it, I can get the standard deviation of each of those columns, or I could look at the grand total. And so when I look at week one, okay, I have a pretty good analysis here in terms of the units. I could do the same thing with uh, the sales. I could, if I wanted, create a series of tabs where I look at uh, uh, units, then at dollars, week one units, week one, week one dollars, week two units, week two dollars, as you see, and begin to try to, and begin to put them together. So the pivot table allows me to look at the data and to mix and match them and see how do they look. 
by changing the x, y variables, because that's literally what I'm doing here. When I have the column, the rows are obviously, that's, that would be the y, the rows are, are the y variable, and the column is the x variable. Pardon me, the column is the y, and the rows are the x's. It's y, x. My apologies. And again, you know, we've got something we can work with. We can use a, uh, another thermal. I like a thermal. It's simple and easy to use. Well, folks, that would get us a start. And you can see, I can start to embed that in a report. You can see how much value and insight I've derived, about four or five different insights tonight on some decisions. Maybe I need to charge more for one session. Maybe I need to push more annual memberships. I've run some I've run some queries here using the pivot table, uh, and I've and I've I've took the data, the raw data, processed it, I summed it, okay, got it organized, then I mined it when I use the pivot table to try to pull out and extract some more information. So there's some things that we could add that we could find out about Tamika's operation, uh, the uh, tanning salon. And we could ask some questions. And if you go back to the case textbook, you're going to see that they're going to have some deliverables. Um, and they, they want a pie chart that compares monthly sales for the tanning products. Uh, identify the, the salon's top two selling items. I'm over in page 258. Based on monthly total dollar sales, which salon items be appears to be the least popular? We can do that using the pivot table. We can do that using some charting. We'll look at a little. We'll look at that a little bit next week. Now I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to take and I'm going to click Save As on my computer on my desktop. June five assignment. And it'll say, do you want to place it? Yes, because I've edited it. Now I'm going to close this off, the file. And now I'm ready to upload my work. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to click back to home. And I'm going to scroll down to this area, down to June 5, the week of June 5. And here it says, SS Tutorial upload here okay now it says resubmit assignment i'm submitting a file upload and i'm going to choose the file now of course go to the desktop I'll find my June 5 assignment. I'll click open. I'll click submit the, submit the assignment. And it's done. Okay. Now, I'm going to leave the student view for a moment. Okay. And I'm going to come up to home, all right? And I'm going to add that file. I want you to take a look and feel free to look through the video as much as possible. I'm going to take this file that we just created for this piece of the assignment, because this case study is going to run over a couple of weeks or so. And I'm going to upload it. I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a module. And it's going to be called... Uh, June 5, 5, 2017. SS tutorial. That means spreadsheet, of course. Okay, I'm going to add the module. 
and that module should be down here at the very, very bottom. And it's gonna be at the very bottom, I'm gonna click Publish, okay? And now I'm gonna to need to, to choose a file. So I'm gonna go back over here Now I'm gonna add that file into my collection of files. I'm in instructor view now, so some of this is not, you, you won't see this stuff. So I'm gonna upload a file, and I'm gonna come over here and find that file that we worked on, the June 5 assignment. That'll be the solution, and it's in there. And probably in there alphabetically. June 5 assignment, there it is. Now I'm gonna go back out here. Um, I'm gonna come all the way to the bottom here. And this And I'm going to find the June file five, June five file. June five assignment. And you'll see it's at the very, very bottom down here and it's published, that's why it's green. Other stuff that's not published is grayed out. And then I'm gonna to go to settings and I'm gonna come up here to uh, the uh, settings. And I'm gonna to go to student view. And I'll look there at the very bottom, I'll go to the very, very bottom, and I'm gonna find that June 5 assignment. And you can either download it, okay? And then you'll wanna upload it. you want to download it to your desktop and then upload it for that assignment, okay? Now, uh, I'm gonna stop the share for just a minute. Stop the share and I'm going to pop, I'm going to stop the recording and then I will end the meeting and I'll be saving this video and I'll post it at YouTube and I'll send you the link. And of course the files over there for you to upload. And I'll stop recording now and then I will uh, end the meeting. I will see you next week.